Hey scholars, welcome to 4.5, uh, chapter 4.5, looking at the video lecture for 4.5. What is the spe species diversity and why is it really important to talk about? Well, we know that biodiversity is one of the core sustainable principles of the entire book that we're looking at. So we're going to look at what about species diversity? What, what about that and why is it important? That's what we're going to investigate with 4.5. So one of the things we're going to look at with species diversity actually boils down to what we're going to be doing in our HERP survey starting this week and throughout the rest of the semester. It looks at two things about species diversity. The first one is called species richness. That's the number of species that an ecosystem contains, um, the number of different species. So for instance, when we look at our HERP survey, we're not only looking for you know, how many corn snakes are there, we're looking for how many different types, different species of snakes are we finding at White Oak High School. With species evenness, it's a little bit different. Species evenness is the relative abundance of an individual kind of, or an individual species itself. So for instance, we're also we're measuring both of these when we look at species diversity at White Oak High School. We're not only looking at how many different species are we having here on campus, but also how many of the actual, you know, how many corn snakes are there? What's our most abundant species at White Oak High School? And that's what really boils down. Those are the two things that make up species diversity, species richness and species evenness. Usually, if you have a high species richness, you're not going to have a very high species evenness um, and vice versa. Um, it just kind of works out that way as far as nature goes. Um, so another thing is diver uh, diver diversity varies within geographic location. Most of your very species rich communities are in, in high areas of, of NPP or net primary productivity going back to last chapter. So tropical rainforest, very high in NPP. Coral reefs, ocean bottom not so much, but large tropical lakes, yes. So ocean bottom is kind of that one odd man out, but it has a lot of diversity because of the organisms that have adapted to that area because there is high, still high, well, I guess you should say high nutrient content because of the things falling from the top of the ocean where the nutrients are gathered uh, and also the sunlight gathered um, and then falling to the bottom. So there are nutrients to be had at the bottom of the ocean too. So those are our looking at, they definitely diversify depending on where you're at in the world. Here's just a, two examples. On the left, you see species richness. Um, obviously, lots of different types of corals and different marine species. On the right, um, you're looking at aspen trees. So all of them are the same exact species, high in species um, evenness, but not so much in ri richness. So those are just a couple of different examples there. Um, your science focus question, species richness on islands. Um, islands are really, really cool. I don't know if you ever got a chance to, to visit an island. Hopefully you have. We have lots of islands along the Outer Banks. Um, but as far as the islands on our banks go, they're a little bit different than some of the islands like Madagascar, Hawaii, places like that. So one thing I want to introduce you to today is the species equilibrium model, or the theory of biogeography, which basically means uh, the rate, of, it's basically looking at the rate of a new species immigrating should balance with the rate of the species extinction. So when no new species comes in, one species got to get out. Basically because, it's not, I mean, it's an island. There's only so many places to go. So that makes sense. Also, the island size and the distance from the mainland need to be considered. Okay, that's one thing I want to talk to you about. Um, so species richness tend to be productive and sustainable. So most of the areas that are the ecosystems that have high species richness are very, very sustainable. Before we talk about um, you know, the next thing, I want to go back and talk about the islands for just a quick second. Usually you see, and this is in general science, when usually what you see when you have an island that is very, very large, um, it, and it's close to the mainland, you tend to have a lot higher species richness. The further away the island is from the mainland and the smaller it is, you see a lower species richness, which just makes sense, right? Large island, more species can be there and inhabit. And the closer out the, uh, to the mainland, it's easier for those, uh, those species to actually get onto the island in the first place. So that's just a general rule of thumb. Keep that in mind come quiz time. That species, uh, species richness with island biogeography, the, the bigger the island, and the closer it is to the mainland, the, uh, the, the more species that you, the higher species richness that you have.